In this video, we're going to be talking about one of Google Home's latest features, the Automation Script Editor. Automations already exist in the user interface and you can create some basic automations. They used to be called routines, but now they're called automations. And now this script editor is designed so that you can take automations to the next level. So it's a YAML based scripting language that you use. And then I imagine over time, they'll improve the functionality. As you'll see in this video, there's already quite a lot that it can do. It's currently only available in public preview, so you'll need to join the public preview program to get access to the functionality. Once you've joined the public preview program, then you should see a yellow looking beaker icon in the top right. You'll see this on both the Android app and on the web user interface. Unfortunately, this functionality isn't available for iOS at the moment, but the documentation suggests that it will be coming at some point in the future. It's worth noting that this functionality is available to all of your households, so you can't just restrict it to yourself. So this might be a pro or con, depending on how you manage things. But if you create an automation using the script editor, then everyone in your household with access to the Google Home will be able to update and disable these automations. So the automations themselves are broken down into three sections. You've got starters, conditions and actions. So starters are what I would call triggers. So basically it's the thing that starts the automation. Conditions are something that you check to make sure that you should run the automation or not. So for example, has the sun set or not? And then actions are the actions it actually takes. So for example, turning a light on. Now let's take a look at an example. All right, so I've now gone to home.google.com on a Google Chrome web browser. And as you can see, there's not a great deal to it. There's just cameras on the left and automations, and that's about it. You can also see this public preview icon at the top here. These are the automations I've already got set up. As you can see here, they actually still call them routines as well. So these are household routines and these are personal routines. And I've created a test script here, as you can see. So you can see these two arrows here suggest that it's a script rather than a normal user interface automation. So what we're going to do is we're going to press add new and then it's going to load up the automation editor straight away. And it's got some text to help us, so some comments. You can see the comments start with a hash and then everything else is the actual automation itself. So the first thing we want to do is give the automation a name which will show on the main automations page. I'm going to do a simple automation whereby when I turn the light on in this room, then it's going to broadcast a message through the Google Home in this room. And I'll now give it a description. So below here, you can now see the three sections I was talking about earlier. So you've got starters, conditions, and actions. It's also nice that you can see they've already started it for you. And also when you click in, you can see that it's also got autocomplete. So they really do try to make it as easy as possible for beginners in my opinion. And also means that you don't have to look at the documentation even if you're not a beginner. So what we want to do is we want to select device.state.onOff. So that's if a device turns on or off. And then the is is, is it true or false? So is it turning on? Yes or no? So true means that yes, when this device turns on, and then you've got to select the device here. So we need to find the study light and we can also type. And then you can see that it filters the list. And that's our starter done. So basically when the study light state is on, true, yes it is on, then do this down here. We're not going to set a condition in this example, but basically if we wanted to add a condition so that it only happened at certain times of the day, then we could do that. So under actions, if we click here, it's going to do the same thing and it's going to help us out. So here we want to do a broadcast and you can see that's the top one up here. So assistant.command.broadcast and then you select the message and the device. Let's select the device first. And you can see it's showing all my Google Home devices. And then let's type a message. And that is literally it. We have already created our first automation in the script editor. So just to quickly go over it again. So a starter is the trigger, the thing that starts the automation. So in this case, the light turning on and then the action is the thing that's going to happen. So in this case, it's going to do a broadcast of this message to this speaker. So what we need to do now is press validate and make sure there's no errors. 
Ah, and we can see here we've got one error. So it's expecting a condition. So what we need to do is we need to comment out this section if we're not going to use it. And there's a little trick here. If you select the lines you want to comment out, you can then press control and forward slash and it will comment those out for you. So let's press validate again and see if it passes. Yep, no errors found. So let's press save. And you can see it's automatically activated the routine as well. So let's go back and see if it shows. Here we go, so light on notification, one start, one action, and we can see that it's ready to go. There's actually a fair amount of documentation available for this new functionality, so check it out and see what commands you can run. They'll probably keep adding over time, I imagine. For example, already they're showing that you'll be able to do parcel detection at some time in the future. So at the moment you can do when someone presses the doorbell, then it triggers an automation, but you can't do if it detects a person automatically or if it detects a parcel. Mark, some idiot has left a parcel for you at the front door. So, as I say, I think they're going to add a lot more in the future. So, with that being said, let's take a look at the automation we created. So, I've got a button by my desk, so I'm now going to turn the light on and then see how long it takes before it does the broadcast. There's the light on. The light was turned on. And there you go. As you can see, there is a delay of a few seconds, so you don't want to use this for automations that are really important, but I think a few second delay for most things is fine. Automations can also apparently trigger based on motion events. Unfortunately, I can't try this out because I haven't got a compatible motion sensor that works with Google Home, but if you have, then please leave it in the comments and let me know how it works. I suspect that it won't be very quick because it is going to be over the internet, and so it might take a couple of seconds to trigger. I imagine with Matter devices coming, hopefully this will improve, but it might still need to go over the internet to trigger the actual automations, I'm not sure. Alright, so we're back into the automations page. Let's create a final example. So, add new again. Let's do something else. So, under starters, type. This time we are going to do an OK event. So basically, if you talk to Google and say a certain thing, then it will trigger this routine and then it will do what you want it to do. So if I say, I like sausages, then the action, we want it to do a broadcast to the study speaker. I'm glad you like them. I like them too. So we need to make sure that we comment this out, if you remember. So with control and forward slash, validate, save. Uh, we forgot to name the automation something. So at the moment it's called untitled, but that's fine. So now if I speak to Google and say, I like sausages, then it should reply. So let's do that now. Hi Google. I like sausages. I'm glad you like them. I like them too. And there we go, we can see that that ridiculous example works successfully. So I have to admit, this example is not particularly useful, but you just need to have an explore yourself really. So if we do this, and then have a look through all the options here, you can see if a device is online or offline, if it's on or off that we talked about before, if it's stopped or started, so for example that's for a washing machine. So if I press that, and then I could say if it's running or paused, then device and you'll see that it's come up with the washing machine. It's also come up with the blinds as well here and also the hoovers in fact. Let's quickly have a look at another one. So volume. So if a certain volume is set or if a device is muted, that's a, that could be a useful one. So if you've muted a certain device like your TV, then you can get it to do a specific thing like turn a light on. You can see on the right hand side here they've got a coming soon section so it will be interesting to see what else appears in this section over time. So there's a couple of example automations. Well there's a first run through of the Google Script Automation Editor. So I imagine I'll be revisiting this in the future as they add more functionality. But until then please consider liking the video if you enjoyed it, comment down below if you've got anything to add and if you've tried it yourself and please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Well that's it for today. So thanks, until next time.